In this presentation, we will see the behavior of master-slave deep flip-flop and for this I will draw few waveforms, the output waveforms here and once I am done with the waveforms, I will draw few important results like what is a glitch, how to remove a glitch, what is the relation between the master-slave flip-flop and the negative s trigger flip-flop. For that we have to find out QM. QM is the output waveform of your master flip-flop. Similarly we will find QS, the output of the slave flip-flop. QP, the output of the positive edge trigger D flip-flop. And finally, QN, that is the output of the negative edge trigger D flip-flop. We have to find all these four waveforms by using the truth table of the D flip-flop. But before actually going into this, let me first explain you the signal I have already drawn. I am having my clock, the green one is my clock. And uh, the D signal is the input to the D flip-flop. And uh, you can see I have taken a random signal. It is not that much random because it actually covers all the possibilities. Now what are the possibilities? The first possibility I can talk about is when the clock is low but the signal is high. Here you can see. Similarly, if I talk about the second possibility, then the clock is high and also the D signal is high. In the same way, it covers all the rest possibilities. That's why I have taken this signal for the analysis purpose. So let's go into this and uh, we will start first by discussing this master slave operation what it is you have already learned about these things in a separate presentation so when we were having uh, the discussion on the jk flip-flop so master slave flip-flop consists of two flip-flops the first flip-flop is called as the master flip-flop and the second flip-flop is called as the slave flip-flop the most important thing to remember about a master slave flip-flop is the clock the clock is given to the master but the same clock is inverted by using a NOT gate and then given to the slave. The greatest advantage of this configuration is the toggling. We have toggling instead of race around condition in the JK flip flop because we eliminated the effect of feedback there. The feedback was eliminated because when the master is operational, slave is not because we have inverted the clock. Similarly, when the slave is operational, master is not. And this is all you have to remember about a master slave flip flop. We will not go in much depth because we have already covered these things. So I will use the truth table for a D flip flop. And if you don't remember, there is no problem. I will make one clock D and the output is qn plus 1. When the clock is low, whatever we, the value of d, qn plus 1 is going to be qn, that is the memory state. And when clock is high, d is low, qn plus 1 is also low. And when the clock is high, d is 1. It means d is also high, output is also going to be high. This is because when d is 0, it means s is 0 and r is 1. And when d is 1, it means s is 1 and r is 0. So we will use this table to find out the value of qm. Now let's see what is the thing on which the qm is dependent. The first thing is the d signal that I have drawn here and the second thing is the clock. And uh, this master flip flop will be operational when the clock is high. So we have to check only for the pulses when the clock is high or you can say the time interval when the clock is high. So let's start plotting our qm. qm is a zero for this high pulse because d is zero. You can see from here if d is zero the output is zero. So I have qm zero up to this point and again when the clock is high you can see d is high so qm will also go high till the next high pulse and in this high pulse there is something very interesting going on which will cause the glitches you can see d our input signal is low for a small time and again it becomes high when the clock is high so we are changing the input d signal in the high pulse so what I have as QM is it will be low initially and uh, again it will become high till the next high pulse and uh, when the clock is high again the D is high so it will remain high for the uh, next high pulse and uh, for this high pulse you can see D is low so it will again go low and finally here again we can see the input signal is changed during the clock. 
it is high initially then it goes low so our QM will also follow this it will remain high initially and then it will go low so this is the QM and uh, now we will move to QS that is the output of the slave flip-flop and uh, you have to remember one important thing for the QS is the clock is inverted we have to see for the time when the clock pulse is low it means we have to see for this time this time and this time period we have to see only for the time when the clock is low it's very obvious because of this not gate and also we don't have to see a D signal okay we have to see QM because QM is acting as the input for the slave flip-flop the D isn't the QM so we have to see QM and the clock when it is low so let's try to get our QS initially QS will be a low because QM is low and it will remain low till the next low pulse when the clock is low and here you can see when clock is low QM is high so our QS will also become high till the next low pulse and again for this low pulse the QM is high so it will remain high and for this time when the clock is low you can see QM is again high so it will remain high and for this low pulse QM is low so finally it will go low and for this low pulse QM is low and it will remain low throughout so this is my QS signal you can see it is very easy to draw once you have the truth table for the D flip flop now we will try to have QP that is the output of the D flip flop simply not the master slave one it is the output of a simple D flip flop when the input is given and the input is this D we don't have to do anything with the QM it's only for the slave so the input is D and we have to check or uh, we have to actually consider the change in the circuit when the clock goes from low to high it means all the rising edges this is the positive edge triggering you already know and we have to consider that the D flip-flop is working only when the clock goes from low to high so let's check what we got in case of QP I will change the color now you can see QP is low and for this rising edge again D is low so it will remain low for the next rising edge and for this rising edge D is high so QP will go high till the next rising edge and uh, for this rising edge D is low so it will become low and remain slow for the next one and for this rising edge D is high so it will go high and remains high and again you can see for this rising edge D is low so it will go low you, you can uh, check from the truth table when D is low output is low when D is high output is high so I'm not going to tell you this thing again and again and uh, for this rising edge you can see D is high so it will remain high and finally it will go low so this is the output waveform for the flip-flop which is positive as triggered and the input signal is given here now finally the last waveform is for the negative as triggered flip-flop and it is very important we have to draw various results from this thing so let's try to find out the output of the flip-flop when it is negative edge triggered we will consider all the falling edges and I will use some different color for this purpose let's use white for this and uh, you will see some very good thing in a minute I will just see these falling edges and for this falling edge D is low so it will remain low for the next falling edge and for this falling edge this one D is high so it will go high and again for this falling edge D is high so it will go high till the next falling edge for this falling edge again D is high and finally for this falling edge D is low so it will go low and for this falling edge D is low and it will remain 
low so we are done with our four waveforms now let's try to find out few important things out of it the first thing i will tell you is the glitches you can see this sudden changes in the output signal we call them we call them glitches g l i t c h e s and they are definitely not desired things and uh, the very important point that i'm going to make is you can see for the slave output the glitches are removed there is no glitches in the slave output that's why to remove the glitches we use master slave flip flop and why the glitches are appearing in the output because we are changing the input signal when the clock is high so it is definitely not desired thing to do the input signal signal must not change when the clock is high this is not a common practice to do because we will have a glitches in our output and if you want to remove the glitches you have to use the master slave flip flop this is the first thing that i want to clear here now we will move to the second important point is the relation between the master slave flip flop and the negative s trigger flip flop you can see the master slave flip flops output is same as the negative s triggered flip flops output so i can say the master slave flip flop work as a negative s triggered flip flop so these are the two things that we have drawn from this waveforms and they are very important you have also learned how to draw the waveforms for the output of a d flip flop so it's already a very good lecture for you you have learned so many things if you have any problem regarding any point in this presentation you can ask in the comment section i will end this presentation here because i think we are crossing the time so let's stop it here see you in the next presentation